But for most people in the Middle Ages, this was an academic problem. They couldn't read or write anyway. During the Middle Ages, books were written out by hand, mostly in monasteries. Often the monks would spend years on a work. Then, in 1450, an invention changed the world. In the German city of Mainz, Johannes Gutenberg invented the technique of printing with movable type. This made it possible to duplicate books in large numbers and at relatively low cost. The technological foundation was laid for the intellectual, political and religious changes of the succeeding centuries. Johannes Gensfleisch, who later changed his name to Gutenberg, was born in Mainz in around 1400. His father was a wealthy merchant. Young Johannes attended the monastic school in Mainz, that much we know, but then his trail goes cold for a while. We only pick it up again in Strasbourg, where he settled in 1434. Here, he set up a factory that produced mirrors for pilgrims. These were very popular among the faithful, who hoped thereby to capture something of the charisma emanating from the shrine they were visiting and from the relics it contained. For Gutenberg, it was a lucrative business. There was a flourishing trade in devotional objects. Particularly popular were woodcuts depicting the saints. Woodcut is one of the earliest printing techniques, but it only reached Europe in the early Middle Ages. Here it served primarily for the dissemination of pictures and texts. But cutting these whole page blocks is a time-consuming process. First, a mirror image of the handwritten page has to be drawn on the block. Then, the individual letters have to be carved out. Finally, the block is inked in, and the sheet of paper is laid on top and rubbed hard with a bone tool so that it takes up the ink. By the start of the 15th century, more and more of these page prints were coming onto the market. Occasionally, a number of pages were bound into a book. The trade in these books also gave a boost to manuscript production. Manuscripts had long since ceased to be the exclusive preserve of the monasteries. Secular scribes were doing good business. The establishment of the first universities had created a great demand for books. Libraries were founded, making knowledge in the form of books accessible. Books needed to be cheaper and more quickly available. But that wasn't all. In particular, scholars wanted uniform copies. A new production technique was feverishly sought after. And one of the seekers was Gutenberg. In 1446, he returned to Mainz. Here, he found solid financial backers, allowing him to go ahead with his enterprise. His breakthrough came with a brilliant idea. He broke up his text into its constituent parts, letters, punctuation marks, and frequent combinations known as ligatures. These were then combined to form the blocks for printing words, lines and pages. The characters were cast and could be used in new combinations time and again. A 
a character is produced as follows. On the end of a metal rod, a mirror image of the letter is engraved. This is then pushed into softened copper, producing a pit in the shape of the letter. This matrix, as it's called, acts as the mould for the actual type, which is cast from lead. In order to manufacture the many letters needed quickly and in sufficient quantity, Gutenberg took another important step forward, inventing the hand-casting instrument. It consists of a rectangular channel. The matrix is inserted at one end and molten lead poured into the other. When the instrument is opened, a letter cast in lead is there, ready to be used. As the matrix is reusable, an unlimited number of identical letters can be cast. Finally, the typesetter can begin to combine the letters into lines. In the form, the lines or columns are combined to create the page layout as desired. The result is a mirror image of the page to be printed. The form is now inked in with printer's ink. Gutenberg used a mixture of lamp black varnish and egg white. Printing can now start. Gutenberg used a special press for this purpose, but he derived the principle from the traditional wine press. Gutenberg's first printed works were official documents, papal decrees, and grammars. But soon he started on a mammoth venture, the Latin Bible. For this project, he cast more than 100,000 pieces of type. For more than two years, Gutenberg's typesetters and printers worked on the first edition of 180 copies. The text was printed in black letter or Gothic type, based on the handwriting of the day. Finally, the illuminator added the coloured initials and drawings. With his Bible, one of the world's most beautiful printed books, Gutenberg proved that a work printed with movable type could be as aesthetically pleasing as one written by hand. The edition was soon sold out. Gutenberg's contemporaries were impressed. It was the first time a work had been available in such a large edition, and every copy was identical. The written word now had authoritative status. Knowledge of this revolutionary technology was quick to spread. Soon, the first printing presses were set up in Cologne, Bamberg and Basel. In Venice, an enterprising publisher named Aldus Manutius began to print the works of the classical authors. His clientele comprised the whole of Europe's humanistic intellectual elite. Manutius employed the most talented printers of the age. They developed the typeface known as Antiqua, which soon spread throughout Europe. Twenty years after Gutenberg's invention, the new technology was firmly established. Thousands of titles were marketed in editions of up to 1,000. Books now became affordable for ordinary people. As society grew more literate, the number of potential readers increased. One of Gutenberg's greatest admirers was the reformer Martin Luther. The new art of printing gave him a bright and bold idea. The layman didn't need a priest to tell him what the Bible said. He could read it himself, 
and decide for himself between revealed truth and the false interpretation put about by the church. So Luther had more than half a million copies of his German translation of the Bible printed, a huge number for those days. And to disseminate his Protestant message, he had hundreds of thousands of leaflets distributed. But it wasn't just Luther who exploited the new medium. So did the emperor, along with kings and free cities of the empire. Soon, single sheet leaflets, flyers we would call them, were discovered as a news medium. When an unusual configuration of planets was announced for 1524, the country faced an avalanche of these flyers, warning of an imminent repeat of Noah's flood. The first daily newspaper appeared in Leipzig in 1650. Einkommende Zeitungen, it was called, roughly breaking news, and it came out six days a week. But the triumphal march of the newspaper did not really begin until steam-powered rotary printing presses appeared in the 19th century. And the offset process ushered in a radical transformation of printing technology. Now the printing and non-printing elements are part of a single continuous surface. First, the page to be printed is transferred by exposure to light onto a thin printing plate. Then the plate is moistened with water so that the non-printing areas do not absorb any ink. Next, the printing ink is applied. This has a greasy element and it adheres to the areas previously exposed to light. In the offset process, the ink is not transferred directly from the form to the paper, but is first offset onto a rubber roller, hence the name, and only then onto the paper. This allows for rapid printing and lower quality paper can also be used. Offset is the commonest printing process in use today, but in spite of all these modern developments, it was Johannes Gutenberg who laid the foundations of our modern media world. His invention is still regarded as one of the most important in human history. Gutenberg himself did not make a fortune with his invention. He'd not even finished printing his Bible before his financial backer called in the loan. In the legal battle that followed, Gutenberg lost not only his printing press, but also all the Bibles he'd already printed. Soon afterwards, Mainz was occupied by hostile troops. Gutenberg had to go into exile. Three years later, he was allowed back as an employee of the new archbishop. On the 3rd of February, 1468, Johannes Gutenberg died. He was buried in the Franciscan church in Mainz. But his invention of printing with movable type had changed the world forever.